I've just taken delivery of my Perspex screens. So uh, the things you get in the pack are obviously two uh, screens for the larger of the, this is the rear windows, just the rear windows, you understand. Um, so the two large panels for the rear and then the two smaller panels for the quarter light on the left there, which are still in packing. And then there's a cleaner, which is in the small bottle to clean the area to which you have to apply the adhesive, which is in the big bottle or thing canister Mark 501. And uh, so the quarter lights are glued in. Um, I'm not going to attempt the quarter lights at this stage because I've got just over two weeks. Uh, in fact, I think it might be even less than two weeks now to craft. And if I mess that up, I'm going to be in really bad shape. So I'm going to leave the quarter lights, but I am going to do the um, other two screens. A couple of things to add here. The first one is that um, the screens that you see there are flat and the ones that are removed actually have are formed into a curve. Um, so uh, as you slide these screens in, they will run round the rubber runners um, or the, the rubbers round the door and sort of form into a, a, a shape. Um, as it turns out, once you get them in place, which we'll see later, they do actually curve quite naturally, which means that they I was able to get them to seal up against the rubbers on the outside of the doors. But we'll see that as the as time goes on. The other thing is, um, preceding this, I stripped the door out. And um, I've covered that in another video, and I'll put a link to that video uh, here. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do this single-handed, but um, it's not too bad, actually. So you probably notice that the uh, the panel, the, the plexiglass is not formed in any curve. Uh, so you just have to uh, sort of bend it into shape and then shove it into the rubber seal. And it actually turned out not to be too bad. Um, I've not quite got it up to the top at the moment. Let's just see if we can get that swung around a bit. Yeah, that's pretty close. Um, and it's holding in place on the friction of I just hope it doesn't drop because it's going to make a mess. Now I'm going to step in here again because um, watching some of the video back I realise that there's tens and tens of minutes watching me struggling to do something. To cut to the chase, I decided initially that rather than risk scratching the Perspex while I was installing it, I would leave the film on that you see here. The, there's a film, a protective film on the inside and there's a protective film on the outside. Bottom line is it doesn't work. So um, in the end, although I do it bit by bit and partially do it, quite honestly, you may just as well take the whole um, film off. The only thing I would say is be very careful, obviously, as you uh, manoeuvre the glass into place because it scratches very easily, as you'll see in a second. The idea of keeping the protective stuff on as long as possible doesn't seem to help much. Um, it just gets in your way. I don't understand what's not going up in this corner. Okay, it was because the bottom was jammed and it wasn't swinging round. That's what the issue was. Okay, so that's great. Quite a little I don't know if I'm scuffing this. I can't see how I am. I haven't got anything on my hands. Those grease marks, I think. I don't know. Wow, if that's that soft. Get a bit of I mean, it's not going to show really, and I can probably polish it out actually. But yeah, it's putting little fine micro scratches on the glass on my fingers. Um, I think what I'm going to do is put some uh, rubber gloves on actually. Hopefully this will stop any further 
scratching. It's very fine. I mean, you can only just see it in the reflection of the, if I stand to the front, you do see it a bit. That's, that's just incredible. That's just where I've been pushing on the, on the glass. I, I, I'm sure I haven't got any grit on my hands. Without boring you any further with the, all this, um, it turns out that it seems that there was grit in the rubber seal and where I was manipulating the glass with my fingers, I was basically getting that grit out of the rubber seal on my fingers and then that was what was scratching the glass. Uh, I don't know what to say, it is so soft this stuff, it really is. Um, so you need to be careful with it. It looks worse actually in this video, looking at it from this side of the window. Uh, it doesn't look quite so bad when you see it in real life, but um, I'm hoping, I'm still hoping I can polish it out. Let's move on to fixing the window in place. What may not be apparent here is that we have the glass in the foreground then immediately behind that there's a piece of uh, sheet metal which is just I think it's folded over from the top of the door and then there's a gap to the actual door skin so um, I'm about to show you how I drill through the glass and through that first piece of uh, sheet metal I don't want you to think that I'm drilling through the door skin because you know obviously uh, I wouldn't want to do that Okay, so here's my thinking about this. Um, I'm going to drill a hole just there. I'm going to stick that screw through. And each side of the plexiglass, I'm going to use a rubber grommet. And then on the other side, I've got a nylock washer. The screw size is M6. And you might wonder why I chose that size, and it's quite simple, because the only nylock washers I had, small ones, are M6. Uh, so I've uh, gone for that, and I had to actually cut this screw down a bit. I think I might need a washer on this side, because uh, that's quite a small head on this screw. So uh, I think we'll use a washer on this side as well, just to spread the load a bit. And not that I'm planning to do it up very tight, it's just to hold it in position. Um, that's approximately where it would have been held had I still had the winder mechanism in, which would have held it about there. So it's, it's about 25 mil or an inch to the, to the, to the right of that. I did think about using this, but that just seems overkill. And the other consideration is I need to be able to get behind so I can get a small spanner onto it, um, while I'm doing up the screw. So that is another consideration. I had considered drilling through the frame here, maybe putting two, one each side, but that just seems like, well, for one thing, I'm drilling very close to the, um, to the edge, well, close to the visible portion of this. And if it cracks, I'll probably go straight up there. And <laughs> at least if I get a crack down here, it may not show. Uh, anyway, that's what we're going to go with. Something I don't think I've mentioned here, but you can just about see it at the bottom of this picture is a, an old cushion um, that I've jammed in the door. Uh, the purpose of that is that if the glass drops, that it'll just land on the cushion and not slam into the base of the door. Yeah, I'm going to have to use some tape or something to stop that sliding around. Oh, still walking away. Right, you can see that uh, the um, fixing is now in place and I did exactly what I said I was going to do. So, um, bolt, I cut this bolt down actually, so I've got to cut this one, but a bolt like that with a flat washer and then the rubber grommet then that goes through the plastic glass and then I put another one the other side of the uh, glass between the glass and the metal bracket push it through the hole and then nylock nut on the other side 
and I've tightened it up a fair bit, but obviously I'm not going to really keep, you know, tightening it harder and harder because it will crack the glass across there. So, um, but the nylock will stop it from spinning loose and I'm, I'm confident that's um, strong enough. Now, the one thing to remember is if you're going to, if you're going to do it the way I've just done it, make sure you've got the um, window pushed fully up. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, you're going to end up with it, um, you know, with a gap across the top when it's uh, actually locked in position. So you can see the scratching at the top, which I'm pretty frustrated about, actually. That's, um, that's really annoying. I did also have some scratches down the bottom, but I don't think you're going to be able to see those. Yeah, you can just about see those, and that's where it's just scraped against some of the metal work as it's been fitted, but it hardly shows. It's that top one that I just don't like. Um, I may be able to polish it out. I'll, uh, I'll do some investigation. This hasn't worked out as well as I'd hoped. Um, you can see that the window has dropped slightly. Um, it just about goes under the uh, rubber seal but as soon as you slam the door the air pressure inside just pops it out um, so that's not going to do so I started to uh, work on the other side which I'll show you what I've done um, so I've removed the screw um, that I had holding it in there and then what I'm doing is and you need to be careful when you do this um, I'm putting a screwdriver through there into the hole that I created. Wrong screwdriver. It's this one. Through there into the hole that I created and then pushing the um, window up as high as I can get it. Sorry, that's out of focus, isn't it? I'm pushing it up as high as I can get it. Um, and then what I'm going to do is somehow hold it up and then re-drill the holes um, I'll have to do it to one side and uh, drill through the um, the glass again and through the metal behind it. This is pretty, I don't know, it's a bit of a bodge, quite honestly. I'm not particularly enamoured with it as a solution. Now, the one thing I did consider was, should I just put the window winder mechanism back in? So I tried that initially just to sort of hold the glass up and jam it up against the um, the top rubber but it turns out that that holds the glass too far away from the outside seal and there's a massive gap between the um, glass so there would end up being a massive gap between the glass and this seal and the reason is because these these plex glasses are not formed they're flat whereas the glass that came out as you can see just over there it's got a slight curve on it so uh that's not going to work so we're back to plan a which is um just to put the screw through now it just so happened that um i had rob um page round from 4040 he was helping me sort out a problem I had with my clutch um, he was telling me that he's had exactly the same problem he's put a screw fixing in the bottom just the way I've done and the window has dropped so this is going to be a, a bit of an issue I've thought about all sorts of things about printing a like a cam arrangement and um, so that I can twist the cam to uh, apply tension to the um, glass I'll have to drill a much bigger hole to get the cam in there and you know and get a screw through the center of the cam but that might be a solution to um, correct the situation where the windows have dropped I've re-drilled the hole and I've put uh, a bolt through again um, same deal with the grommets um, sandwiching between the uh, washer here and the screen and then the screen and the um, metal behind. The only thing is that because I've moved a bit to the right and a bit up, the distance is bigger. So I've used two grommets between the screen and the uh, metal bracket. Now you can see the difference where I've drilled the original hole. In the foreground, you see the hole through the um, glass 
and in the background you see the hole through the metal and you can see how much I've moved it up. Now what I did do was to make absolutely sure that I'd got it stuck, I used this hole, I probably can't do it now because it's screwed up, but I basically put a screwdriver through the hole, through the other hole and, and sort of levered it up. Obviously you've got to be careful that you don't split the glass, but you can put a fair amount of force on it and um, that jammed the glass up into the uh, top rubber and then while it was in that position with the other hand <laughs> so I'm uh, juggling this with the other hand I drilled the hole I drilled it at a slight angle on purpose because my idea was it will pull the glass up into the um, into position it's all a bit Heath Robinson but it does seem much better it's definitely up higher and I've tried slamming the door and it has no effect. So I don't have the original problem where the window kept popping when I uh, slammed the door. So uh, this is the passenger side. I'm going to go back and do uh, the driver side now. Yesterday I did a track day at Brands Hatch and uh, I'm glad to say that the windows are working fine. They all stayed in place. So that problem is now fixed.